Have you ever wondered how electricity works to power things you use every day? Well, here's the answers. All of these things, things you use every day, require electricity. So all the appliances in your home, like your refrigerator, your toaster, the light bulbs when you turn them on, your laptop, if you need to charge it, requires electricity, your beets, your, to make a birthday cake, you need electricity. All of these things require electricity. I don't think, personally, that we could really go a day without electricity in this modern time. But how does electricity work? So we know that when we plug something in or we turn on the switch, we know that we're closing the circuit, so we're allowing the electrons to pass through, which is electricity. But how does it actually work to power our devices, like our beats, like our laptops, like our refrigerator? How does it actually work? Electrical energy, basically which is electricity, can be transformed into many different types of inverted into radiant energy, which is light, thermal energy, which is heat, or mechanical energy, which is the energy required to actually do things, like make a fan spin or make the hair dryer blow the air. Mechanical energy is energy needed to do things. So you start with electricity, then it can be transformed into these three different types of energies. That so we'll start with electrical energy. So electrical energy, electricity, starts when voltage causes electrons to move from one atom to another. So you have a battery or you have a generator or something. Whatever the voltage source is, it's causing the electrons to move. Once those electrons are starting to move, they bump into each other. Bumping into each other creates heat, thermal energy. And then the faster these electrons are bumping into each other, the more thermal energy they're creating. So if you start with the voltage source, the electrons are moving. They're moving quickly, which builds up heat. The faster they move, the more thermal energy they're making. Then that thermal energy can be transformed into radiant energy. Sorry, going all over the place here. So that thermal energy can then be transformed into radiant energy. So as they're bumping along, they're moving into each other, they're creating thermal energy. Some of the materials get hot enough to emit visible radiation, which is light. So some get moving so quickly that they actually give off light. And the hotter the material gets, the more radiation it emits. That's why some light bulbs are brighter than others. They have the ability to get hotter, therefore they can get brighter. Some light bulbs are dimmer than others. They're dimmer because they can't get as hot, so they can't emit as much radiation. So again, to summarize this part, electrical energy, electricity, can be transformed into thermal energy, and then if enough thermal energy builds up, then it's transformed into radiant energy. There's also another part of this. So as we've been talking about, electrical energy can be transformed into three different types of energies. Radiant energy, which is light, thermal energy, which is heat, and mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the only one we haven't talked about, so let's explore this type of transformation a little bit more. Mechanical energy is the energy required to do things. So you need mechanical energy for the motor in your hair dryer to work so that you can dry your hair. You need mechanical energy so the fan can spin like you did with the snap circuits. You need mechanical energy for the doorbell to ring. All of these things are doing stuff. When you need energy to do stuff, that's what mechanical energy is. So here's how the energy transformation happens. This is how you go from electricity to mechanical energy. So again, all of these things start with the same exact thing, voltage. So voltage causes the electrons to move from one atom to another. These electrons travel through a conductor, like a wire, and they arrive at a piece of metal, which is usually in a motor. The electrical current magnetizes the metal in the motor, which causes the motor to move. This motion is mechanical energy. The motor uses its mechanical energy to power the device. So the voltage is causing the motion, the electrons are moving. When they hit the metal, they magnetize it, and then that magnetism moves the motor, which provides the power. And it's complicated, but we'll do a lab to figure this stuff out.